Hello and welcome back or welcome to Miss Fana, so if this is your first time on the channel. Now today we're going to go and have a look at money laundering, so this will be very helpful to you if you're currently studying ACCA, AAT, ACA, CMA, CIFA, any sort of finance qualification at all, this will benefit you, so let's get straight into it. So money laundering in effect is the process by which criminals attempt to conceal the true origin and ownership of the proceeds of criminal activities. So it's a way for them in which money earned, which is classed as dirty money, is transferred and transformed, so it appears to have come from a legitimate source known as clean money. Now ethics in general is a very big topic across all financial qualifications, so it always comes up in an exam, there's always marks for an ethics question, but specifically money laundering. But money laundering in particular is a very big topic, so if you can get to grips with the details behind this, this will carry you through to level 2, level 3, level 4 and beyond. So the whole idea behind money laundering is that the criminal, or whoever's trying to hide the dirty money, wants to do this in a way that the money is hard to trace, so it's hard to trace it back to its very original form. So there's three stages of this process, so the first one that we have is called placement. So placement is where they might put cash into a financial product like the bank, but they'll only do this in very small amounts every so often, because if they were to put a huge amount of cash into the bank, then that would raise suspicion. So by doing it this way, then they're avoiding initial suspicion. Next we have something called layering. So layering is where they create a series of transactions so that the original source of the funds is obscured and it's difficult to trace. So it's also known as the concealment stage. So they might do this by creating offshore accounts, so they'll have perhaps multiple transactions being transferred between bank accounts, but the very source of, the, of that money has come from an offshore account. The other way they might do it is by setting up a front company. So a front company is basically a subsidiary or a shell company, and it's used to shield another company from liability or scrutiny. And a front company can be used to protect a parent corporation or a brand from negative publicity in the event of a mishap and may also be used to conceal illegal activities, if you've never heard the word front company before. The third process is interrogation. So this is where once the criminal is happy that they've obscured the trail back to the money's origins, they then convert the proceeds into a legitimate form. So this might be the purchase of, say, an asset of some kind, like a house, a car, or another business, for example. Now, prosecutions for money laundering can involve placement, layering, or integration. So, any one of those stages, there will be prosecutions for money laundering. Now, there are a few other criminal offences relating to money laundering that we need to have a look at in a bit more detail. And this is, firstly, retaining the proceeds of tax evasion. So, individuals who are deliberately avoiding tax and keeping that money failing to disclose knowledge or suspicion of money laundering. So if you have a suspicion of money laundering and you don't report that, then you are also liable. Acquiring, using or possessing the proceeds of criminal activities such as drug trafficking. So I think that one's a little bit self-explanatory. Benefits obtained through bribery and corruption. So again, quite self-explanatory. And then we've got tipping off. So tipping off when information is disclosed to a suspect of an investigation or anybody else by someone who knows that a police investigation into money laundering has begun or is about to begin. So accountants, both firms and individuals, are required to comply with anti-money laundering legislation and a failure to do so can lead to both several penalties and actual possible imprisonment. So all firms of accountants need to ensure that their staff are aware of money laundering and their obligation to detect and report it. And because accountants in particular are bound by a duty of confidentiality, as you know with ethics, guidance is required to explain when they can override that duty and to whom to report suspicions to, because it's such a sensitive area. For example, industry regulators or the company's audit committee. And one thing that you'll see in practice is that, say a client is lost to another accountant, or say you gain a, a new client, there is something called a clearance letter that is sent between the two accountancy firms to confirm that there is no known or suspicion of money laundering. So if you currently work in practice, it might be worth having a look at one of those. So there are other ways that accountants can meet their obligations here. So apart from the training and guidance, they can put into place systems, controls and procedures to ensure that firms are not used for money laundering purposes and its responsibility rests with senior management. They can also appoint what's called a money laundering reporting officer who's responsible for receiving and evaluating reports of suspected money laundering from colleagues within the firm. 
So other things that can be done is we can establish or enhance the record keeping systems for all transactions and for verifying the identity of clients by obtaining the passports of key client staff. Next, we can undertake customer due diligence. So due diligence procedures, there could be a checklist that a firm implements to go down to make sure that we're compliant with money laundering when again taking on a new client or looking at an older client. And then also I'm gonna repeat this, training and educating staff. So this could be periodically, it could be a mandatory course that's taken every single year and I've seen that before in practice and that works. Those are some good ways that we can remain compliant with money laundering. We have a look at some of the penalties that you might might face is you could face unlimited fines. Also, the Financial Services Authority, also known as the FSA, actually has the power to take action against any firm or individual. And we shouldn't forget that each of the individual financial bodies, so the ACCA, ACA, AAT, SEMA, SIPGA, etc. There are a few others. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it then hit the like button because it does help the YouTube algorithm. Please consider subscribing and otherwise I shall see you on the next video.